Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Talk. My name is Dustin Smith. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. For those who may be joining for the first time, this series, Inside Talk, is our monthly virtual event series designed to educate, inform, and inspire future travel. Here, we connect with our wonderful partners, our tour architects, and our Talk tour directors from around the world to give you just a small taste of what to expect on tour with us. Today, we're joined by two expert talk directors in Canada, Stephanie Morris and Eric Croft, who have been leading tours for talc for a combined 20 years. Stephanie was born and raised in Newfoundland and specializes in the Canadian provinces where her love of wildlife and nature truly shines. And Eric hails from Nova Scotia and has led our safari tours in Kenya and Tanzania, as well as tours in Canada. Uh, but he truly loves sharing his part of the world with talc guests. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. You are all on mute. You're joining us today via Zoom webinar. If you do have any questions, please type them into the chat function at the bottom of your screen as they come to mind. I'll do my best to answer these throughout if they are any, if they are of the technical variety, um, but we'll wait till the end to answer most of them um, with Stephanie and Eric. And we'll try to get to as many as possible. I know many of you probably have questions about your upcoming travels and thank you for traveling with us and booking with us. Um, we won't be talking about those tour specifics today. Um, please call our team of reservation sales counselors uh, or visit talc.com slash health for all the latest information regarding ongoing travel updates. Uh, today's presentation will last roughly one hour and it is being recorded uh, and available for viewing tomorrow afternoon on our travel blog, The Talker, at talk.com slash blog. You will all receive an email with that link tomorrow when it's ready to go. So if you do have to jump off early, please know that you will, uh, you will get the recording as well. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start the program. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, Tanzi. La thema. Um, my name is Stephanie, like Dustin was saying, Stephanie Morris. I've been a TAUC director with TAUC for seven years. During my time with this fabulous company, I've had the pleasure of leading the Canadian Rockies and Glacier, Nash Glacier National Park Tour, uh, the Grand Rockies via rail, Canadian Capitals and Niagara Falls, Costa Rica Bridges Program, Jungles and Rainforests, and one of my absolute favorites, the Canadian Maritimes. The CM is a tour that I hold close to my heart, bringing, uh, being born and raised in a small community in Newfoundland and having the privilege to live in Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. I always feel like running this tour is, being, is bringing you uh, to visit my beloved home and backyard. Now living in Churchill, Manitoba and Pavones, Costa Rica, I truly look forward to coming home and directing the Canadian Maritimes tour. Every tour is like as if I'm seeing my surroundings for the first time. And it might be possible that I'm just excited as you, if not more. 
Uh, hi, uh, I'm Eric. Uh, I've been a tour director with Tau for over 15 years now. I deliver tours in Canada. Uh, two of our Rockies tours, the best of the Canadian Rockies and a Bridges tour, uh, Wonders of the Canadian Rockies. I lead the Canadian Capitals and Niagara Falls tour, the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour, uh, the Canadian Maritimes tour, and I lead a few tours in Africa, the Kenya and Tanzania, a classic safari tour, uh, the Tanzania Serengeti to Zanzibar tour, and the Botswana, South Africa, and Zambia tour. When guests ask me uh, what my favorite tour is, I always hesitate. I love all of my tours. I love them all in very special ways. Um, but the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour and the Canadian Maritimes tour certainly hold a, a very special place in my heart. These are the first tours I led um, when I became a Tauk tour director and they go through my stomping grounds. These tours are my life. Well, let's get started, shall we? Today, Eric and I will be sharing with you the wonders of two of Tauk's Eastern Canadian tours. These two tours cover Canada's maritime provinces, the Canadian Maritimes tour and the Nova Scotia in Prince Edward Island tour. Throughout this pre presentation, Eric and I will focus on some of the highlights from these unique tours. With only a short time period, we will move rather quickly with the content, giving you many opportunities towards the end of the presentation for questions. However, we will gladly answer right away so you don't forget what you're going to ask. Eric and I will paint a picture of this incredible region and maybe one day soon you will visit us in person and explore this beautiful part of the world in detail together. Both tours explore the maritime provinces. The Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour features those two areas, while the Canadian Maritimes tour uh, ventures into New Brunswick and onto Cape Breton Island. The Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour is an eight day tour, while the Canadian Maritimes tour is an 11 day tour. Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is probably one of my favorite views um, in Halifax. You can see the Citadel overlooking uh, the Halifax Harbor. Both the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island and the Canadian Maritimes tour will commence in Canada's Maritimes largest uh, city, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Although Halifax is small and lightly populated, it plays host to an array of brilliant things to see and do. Uh, from historical museums to unique shops um, and restaurants. Each tour will visit the iconic Halifax Citadel, as you can see playing in the background. The Halifax Citadel is a national historical site founded by the English during the Vic Victorian era in 1749. It stands on a glacial drumlin over the city overlook above the cities downtown, occupying the eastern part of the peninsula and the central harbor. Uh, the Halifax Citadel offers some of the most spectacular views of the city with uh, Nova Scotia um, being dubbed Canada's ocean playground. Uh, you will start smelling that salt air, salt air as soon as you leave the airport and especially when you're here on Citadel Hill. In true Tauk fashion, we will visit the site after hours for an evening of experiencing life as a soldier in the 78th Highlander Regiment, military history, and a gun demonstration. The evening will conclude with a beautiful reception and dinner, um, which is possibly one of my favorite meals on the entire tour. What you're looking at now is Halifax Harbor. Halifax um, is well known for its lively waterfront district. Uh, the Strollable Boardwalk is one of the world's longest urban boardwalks, spanning in length of 2.5 miles. Bustling water, this bustling waterfront is a hot spot in the city and is one of Nova Scotia's most visited destinations. The waterfront is a magnet for visitors and locals alike, lined with seafood restaurants, 
uh, local artisans, boutiques, cafes, and various activities. Um, you will have an opportunity to explore uh, this area for yourselves. Another wonderful picture of Halifax and um, the Bedford Basin and the harbor. For over 250 years, the Port of Halifax has remained a cornerstone of economic activity for the city, uh, the region and the province as a whole. The port's strategic location made Halifax an ideal gateway into North America for settlers, for shippers, and a perfect vantage point for military operations. Uh, you will gain the understanding of this rich history while visiting Canada's unique seaside city. Halifax Public Gardens. For those of you wanting a break from the hustle and bustle of the downtown and lively waterfront, the Halifax Public Gardens is definitely a must. The Halifax Public Gardens are one of the finest surviving examples of a Victorian garden in North America. Founded by Nova Scotia's Horticultural Society in 1836, this stunning garden expands about one city block and it's not a far walk from our hotel. Uh, the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour will actually take a guided tour of the gardens during your visit here. Hey Stephanie, can I interrupt you for a second? Mm -hmm. So we just had a guest ask about, about cuisine. I don't know if you're gonna go into it more or not, but um, they asked about any non-seafood choices um, while, while around. <laughs> Um, if you wanted to go into that slightly, I'm sure there are many, but if you wanted to give your expertise. That's a wonderful question. And Eric is going to touch base a little bit more about seafood and some of the other agricultural delights that uh, the maritime provinces have to offer. Um, and yes, indeed, um, there are many options for um, non seafood um, um, lovers, or some of you might have allergies to seafood, which is unfortunate, but I'll eat all your scallops and lobsters if that's the case. Um, but believe it or not, in Nova Scotia being uh, Canada's ocean playground, um, when living in Nova Scotia, and Eric can probably contest to this, that there are a lot of meat eaters. So beef is definitely something that is highly prized um, in, in Halifax and all over the Maritimes. So although you want to eat as many mussels, oysters and lobsters and, and scallops when you're here, um, there's definitely um, uh, room for uh, things like fiddleheads and, and blueberries and uh, anything maple. Um, and then of course, beef and chicken is one of the staple dishes that we have. So in downtown Halifax, especially, uh, you'll find lots of great um, uh, steakhouses and, and different things besides seafood. And no one's going to look at you funny if you don't order the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. We'll, we'll love to hear Eric's perspective later on. <laughs> All right, well, moving from the lights to devastation, um, the next picture is Halifax's explosion. So Halifax has had its share of devastations and disasters, uh, but none as severe as the Halifax explosion of 1917. Um, the blast was the, the largest human-made explosion of its time and was felt about 250 miles from the site. So where we're going to visit in Prince Edward Island, you could actually feel the, the boom from, from this explosion. The explosion immediately disrupted communications linking continental North America, Nova Scotia and the world overseas. As news spread, people from all over the world acted to relieve the mass suffering that um, this devastation had caused. The explosion had profound and long lasting consequences. The rebuild of the city and the surrounding area saw advances and improvements. The relationship created during this horrific time still exists today. Uh, while exploring the city, uh, you will still find lots of evidence of the explosion and the impact that remains. Pier 21, um, the Canadian Maritimes, uh, Pier 21, the Canadian Maritimes, Museum of Immigration, rather, sorry, occupies part of Pier 21. It is the former ocean liner terminal and immigration shed from 1928 to 1971. Pier 21 is Canada's last remaining ocean immigration shed. 
To be honest, it was not until I started running the Canadian Maritimes Tour that I truly understood um, the existence importance of this facility. Both the Canadian Maritimes and the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island Tour will visit Pier 21, um, learning of its significance and history and the existence of many European cultures now in North America. And I absolutely love our visit here at Pier 21. I get choked up um, just thinking of it. So many of our previous tout guests have linked their family's entrance into the new world here. Stephanie, can I ask you to go back really quickly? We got uh, many course. people, many people asking what caused the explosion in Halifax. <laughs> well, what caused the explosion was um, it was during war times, and of course there was a lot of ships in the harbor. Um, and it was just technical error of, um, of a sea captain on one of those ships. Um, so explosions and two ships, um, they didn't manage to avoid each other while one was coming in to dock and the other was going out to sea. Um, and then uh, they struck. Um, and of course, a fire started, which, which created um, a spark and one of the ships was full of explosion, explosion, uh, explosives, and um, that's what took place. So um, you will see when you're in Halifax, um, evidence of that devastating explosion where there's um, objects still embedded in buildings. Um, there's an anchor, anchor, anchor that is embedded into um, a building in the north end, and it's still sitting there. Um, so that's what caused the explosion. And of course, um, it was it was devastating. And still to this day, there's um, great stories of how how Halifax is linked um, to a lot of the American states um, uh, because of of this devastation. Um, so you'll hear all about that when you're on tour with Eric and I. All right, moving on to the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. Uh, this museum is located in the heart of Halifax's historical waterfront. There is no better place to immerse yourself in the Nova Scotia rich maritime heritage than here. Um, you will discover stories and events um, and people that have come to define the province and the relationships uh, with the sea. From small craft boat building to World War, War convoys, um, the days of sail to the age of steam, as well as our Nova Scotia connection to the Titanic. And they have a wonderful display in here about the uh, Halifax explosion as well. Um, so be prepared to stay a while if you're visiting uh, the Maritime Museum, uh, because it will have much influence uh, on the remaining days of your tour. And then, we have the Prince George Hotel, located in the heart of downtown Halifax. Now, I have to correct myself. When I say downtown, I actually mean the uphill climb of Halifax is downtown. And when you're there, you'll see, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. From the moment you arrive to the time you check out, um, you will love the Four Diamond service and accommodations here at the Prince George. The staff at the Prince George are best in the business. I always joke with them that I'm gonna put them on the coach with us and take them on our entire tour. Uh, we spend several nights at this location and we will have the opportunity to dine at Halifax's premium, one of Halifax's premium restaurants, Geo. It is fantastic. Also at the Prince George, you will gain the greatest respect and confidence for our coach drivers. Witnessing how they maneuver around the narrow streets in Halifax and illegally parked vehicles will absolutely blow your mind. Some of you may want, may want to close your eyes for this portion of the journey. <laughs> there is not one day on these tours that we will not be within a glance of a body of water, whether it be the open Atlantic or a small inlet of it, water plays a major role. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, the Bay of Fundy, uh, the Northumberland Strait, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, water played a major role in creating these lands. And water played a major role as to why the early settlers chose this land. Time stands still 
in the Canadian Maritimes, preserving a way of life that honors the land and the sea, and a cultural mix of early French, Irish, Scottish, and English influences. From cosmopolitan eclectic Halifax, we explore Peggy's Cove. Population 76. It's truly uh, a world apart, uh, nestled on a rocky coastline uh, with stunning vistas. It's a magnet uh, for artists and photographers. The geological history of Peggy's Cove began over 470 million years ago in an ocean basin near ancient Africa. Mud and sand gathered in the basin and were over time compressed into rocks. The tectonic plate movement brought the basin around the world to ancient North America uh, where the plates then collided. As you stand on the rocks, that thought alone is quite humbling. Uh, and when you explore the uh, fishing village nearby, you truly appreciate the purpose of the lighthouse itself. I never tire of visiting Peggy's Cove. The ocean creates a different atmosphere each visit. Um, and I encourage my guests to stand facing the ocean and listen and smell the Atlantic. It is quite humbling. Um, further along the South Shore, we explore Mahon Bay. It's a pitcher, Coast Guard, maritime town. Early settlers were enticed to come to Nova Scotia with the offering of religious freedom. And this is certainly evident today as we come into the Bay. Uh, the three churches, St. James Anglican, uh, Trinity United, and St. John's Lutheran. I love the pace of these tours. Around every turn in the road, there is breathtaking scenery. And more often than not, there's a shout from the back of the coach, uh, photo stop, please. Then we move on to the fishing village of Lunenburg for a walking tour with a local guide or a visit to the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic. Um, Old Town Lunenburg was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site as one of the best surviving examples of a planned British colonial settlement in North America. This town once excelled at wooden shipbuilding and its masterpiece was a blue nose, a fishing schooner that was a legendary racer. should never have agreed to this last race. She's too old. Eddie! Coming in there! Don't so hell you're back! Get to it, Matt! Here's there's some kind of difficulty. There seems to be something loose up there, and we... Her capsule's found! Here's another side ship crashed into it! Oh, I can't see a man! All right! Just one more, old girl. And you can rest. Last race and still undefeated, the Blue Nose out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia was fastest in the world for almost 20 years. Imagine a fleet of schooners from Lunenburg fishing for cod off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. And then imagine a fleet of schooners from the New England states fishing for cod off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. A friendly rivalry developed. Who could catch the fish the fastest and get it home to market first, the Americans or the Canadians? Of course, there were all manner of practical reasons to get your fish to market first, but it all came down to who had the fastest boat. The Blue Nose holds a very special place in my heart. Present day, we have a replica, Blue Nose 2. She acts as a goodwill ambassador 
for the province of Nova Scotia. She visits numerous ports along the maritime coasts uh, during the summer months. She also travels quite extensively up and down the eastern seaboard of the States. Um, Blue Nose 2 was the host ship um, at Expo 67 in Montreal. Blue Nose 2 visited uh, Expo 86 in Vancouver. And this makes me correct myself. Blue Nose 2 acts as a goodwill ambassador for all of Canada. Another day, another body of water, the Bay of Fundy. Both tours offer you a chance to see this natural wonder, the highest tides in the world. The Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour takes us along the bay through the scenic Annapolis Valley. The scenery, the history, it is just incredible. This tour would not be complete without a visit to Grand Pre National Historic Site. Along with the Mi'kmaq, Canada's First Nations people, and Stephanie's gonna be speaking about the Mi'kmaq shortly, this area was also inhabited by the Acadians. England and France were often at war back home in Europe. Those wars often spilled over into North America. Caught up in these wars were the Acadians, French by blood, but fiercely independent. Not fierce in their actions, but fierce in independence. No matter the conflict back home, Acadians wanted no part of it. They felt themselves as a separate entity. They were not French. They were Acadian. This proved to be problematic for the British when the region came under British rule. What to do with the Acadians? The British solution was to expel the Acadians. And present day, we would probably define this as ethnic cleansing. The Acadians were, uh, their lands were destroyed. Uh, the Acadians were shipped to France. They were shipped to New England, South America, and the Caribbean. They were also shipped to Louisiana, which at that time was French territory, your Cajuns. And this story was somberly rendered in Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's uh, epic poem of Angeline. After the colonial wars, New England planters and foreign Protestants emigrated to Nova Scotia. After the American Revolution, Loyalists emigrated to the colony. And a good deal of those people came here to Minneapolis Valley. And we witnessed that presence as we drive through this region. Port Royal National Historic Site is the location of the habitation. The habitation was established by France in 1605 and was that nation's first permanent settlement in North America. Port Royal served as the capital of Acadia during its destruction by the British military forces in 1613. And our guides at the site are dressed in period costume. These tours, well, we certainly delve into the history of the region, but I can't think of a better way to do that than with food. Uh, we've mentioned uh, fiddleheads, blueberries, cranberries, uh, shellfish such as lobsters, mussels and oysters, oat cakes, maple syrup. You will find these items on the menu wherever we travel. And more often than not, the chefs will share their fabulous recipes with us. As we visit the town of Digby, we will see the world famous dog, uh, Digby Scallop Fleet and of course, have the opportunity to uh, indulge in the scallops themselves. And perhaps this is not the best way to promote a tour, but returning Tauk guests often refer to the Tauk Ten. The Bay of Fundy is brimming with marine wildlife, and this area is one of the best places to experience it. We have the opportunity to view a fascinating array of marine wildlife, see the people whose lives depend on the ocean, and explore the Bay of Fundy, a UNESCO 
biosphere reserve. Each spring and summer, a variety of whales, porpoises, seabirds, and dolphins make their way back to the waters off Nova Scotia as part of their annual migration. We take a boat out on the bay. As a tour director, this is one of my favorite experiences on this trip. Um, picnic lunch in hand, we go looking for whales. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, humpback whales measuring 57 feet and weighing in at 90,000 pounds. The humpback whale is the most regularly seen whale in the Bay of Fundy. Uh, Digby Pines is a Norman style chateau overlooking the Annapolis Basin and it has been uh, welcoming guests since 1929. The hotel has a casual atmosphere and very scenic views. This is the last hotel on the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour. It's a great place to catch our breath before we return to the hustle and bustle of the real world. Millbrook Mi'kmaq Cultural and Heritage Center. Oh, the beat of the drum always gets uh, gets me tickly uh, going to this uh, event. After leaving the colonial city of Halifax, both the Canadian Maritimes and the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour will stop just outside Truro, Nova Scotia uh, to, just, uh, to explore the diverse history of the First Nations people of Nova Scotia. Located in Millbrook First Nations, the center is dedicated to the celebration of the Mi'kmaq heritage. The Cultural and Heritage Center houses artifacts dating back some um, 7,500 years, uh, which are on display for you to discover. During our visit, um, we will have the opportunity to merge ourselves in the teaching of Gluth Cap. Uh, the cultural her hero and the transformer of the Eastern Woodlands Indigenous people. We will take part in a traditional ceremony of smudging. A smudging is typically a ceremony for purifying or cleansing the soul of negative thoughts. Definitely a fantastic way to start any vacation. Next stop, Nouveau Brunswick. New, uh, New Brunswick is the only bilingual speaking province in all of Canada. You will visit this province if you choose to take the Canadian Maritimes tour. While visiting New Brunswick, we will spend a day exploring the famous Hopewell rocks along the Bay of Fundy. Why so famous? The Hopewell rocks are also known as the flower pots, our rock formations known as sea stacks caused by tidal erosion. The Bay of Fundy is one of the seven wonders of North America, the highest tides on earth, houses the rarest of whales in the world, semi-precious minerals and dinosaur fossils. Uh, we have the opportunity to walk along the ocean floor where twice daily 160 billion tons of seawater flows in and out. It's hard to comprehend that the world's largest tides range from 30 to 53 feet. Um, Eric has already spoke with the Bay of Fundy while exploring the South Shore. If you choose to take the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour, you will have the opportunity to visit the Bay of Fundy while in Nova Scotia. 
and the video that you were, was just playing in the background there um, can definitely um, make you see what it's like when those tides come up and down every day. And you'll have the experience uh, when we're at Hopewell Rocks. While visiting New Brunswick, we will stay at the Delta Beaux in the in Moncton, New Brunswick. The Delta is perfectly located alongside the bustling streets of downtown Moncton and the Petty Kodiak River. During your stay at the Delta Beaux you will dine at the Four Diamond Windjammer restaurant, uh, probably the one of the best restaurants in all of the Maritimes. Um, meals are locally uh, sourced ingredients and produce is handpicked from uh, the hotel's rooftop garden. It is extremely rare, um, but I have yet to have a tout guest not rave about this experience. And for those seafood, non-seafood lovers, or if you have those allergies, they have some of the best um, beef um, entrees uh, that you can, can ask for in the Maritimes. While visiting New Brunswick, we will, oh, sorry. I, and then next up, if witnessing the world's um, highest tides wasn't enough, depending on the time of your visit, you will have the chance uh, to view the tidal bore, a viewing platform. Only a short walk from the hotel along the river, a boardwalk gives you a great place to share in the excitement. Um, what is the tidal bore? The tidal bore is a naturally, phenomena caused by the surging waters from the Bay of Fundy tides that roar up the Petty Kodiak River. Eric already spoke of the Acadian culture on the South Shore that you would experience while you're on tour with the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour. Um, but here in New Brunswick, you'll also have that experience as well. The Acadians are the descendants of the French who settled in Acadia during the 17th and 18th centuries. Acadia was located in present day Eastern Canada's maritime provinces. And proportionally, New Brunswick is home to the largest Acadian population in all of Canada. Roughly 30% of the province um, are of Acadian descent. And you will definitely see that when on tour with us. Depending on the time of year um, of the season, uh, you will you'll depend on, you'll see the festive colors um, on your journey, uh, the red, white, and blues, and the, the gold stars. En route to Prince Edward Island prior to leaving New Brunswick, uh, we will first visit the Acadian town of Shediac. And you can see the festive Acadian colors in, in here on this, um, in this boat. What better place to eat lobster than the lobster capital of the world? Lunch today is served fresh from Shediac Bay. We will board a once operational lobster fishing boat while Captain Ron educates you on the history and the ways of the fishery in New Brunswick. You'll experience a crash course into how to properly cook and eat a lobster. But first, you'll have to roll up your sleeves and help catch your lunch. It might be the only tout tour meal that you burn calories. We cross the Confederation Bridge to Prince Edward Island, truly a storybook setting, where you find yourself immersed in picturesque, inspirational scenes of Victorian farmsteads, green rolling fields, and red sand beaches reposing between seas and skies of vibrant blue. The Confederation Bridge spans the Abigail Passage of Northumberland Strait. It links Prince Edward Island with mainland New Brunswick. Construction took place between uh, the autumn of 1993 and the spring of 1997, costing 1.3 billion dollars. It's a multi-span, post-tensioned, concrete box girder structure. Most of the curved bridge is 131 feet above the water and it contains a 197 foot navigational span uh, to permit ship traffic. 
It takes about 10 minutes to cross the eight mile long bridge. It is indeed an engineering marvel. The longest bridge in the world over water that may freeze. Prince Edward Island is formed from sedimentary uh, bedrock of soft red sandstone that produces the rich red soil. The redness of the soil is due to the high iron oxide content. The difference in the topography from New Brunswick and Nova Scotia is jaw droppingly evident the second we set foot on the island. Prior to the arrival of the Europeans, the island formed a part of Mi'kma'ki, the lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The island was first explored by Europeans in the 16th century, and the French later laid a claim over the entire maritime region, including Prince Edward Island, uh, back in 1604. Canada was created in 1867 with the Union of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Ontario, and Quebec, uh, then known as Upper and Lower Canada. Uh, where does Prince Edward Island fit into the whole scheme of things? A visiting circus, a huge railroad debt, and a city with a party attitude are part of the answer. Charlottetown hosted a conference back in 1864 with the idea of creating a country, partly in response to what was happening to the colonies uh, to the south. Would the United States, along with moving west, consider moving north? What to do? Charlottetown is steeped in history. And with a two night stay, we give you an opportunity to explore your surroundings. Accommodation uh, is at the heart of the, uh, of the town, city, at the Delta Prince Edward, and it overlooks the downtown harbor. It's just steps away from a winding boardwalk and adjacent to the many shops of uh, Peaks Wharf. We step back in time on a visit to Green Gables Heritage Place. This is the site of the home and farm that inspired Lucy Mon Montgomery's literary masterpiece, Anne of Green Gables. We go inside Anne's home and we view rooms set up as they were described by the author. Uh, we stroll the grounds to learn more about rural life in the early 20th uh, century. The Canadian Maritimes was Tauk's first exotic destination, Tauk's first coach trip outside the United States. And I remember as a kid, uh, seeing Tauk coaches coming to my hometown of Lunenburg and eating lunch at one of the town's wonderful restaurants. Lots of lasting relationships have been created over the years. One of those connections being with PEI Preserves. It is a wonderful visit. It's a wonderful meal and it's a wonderful Tauk story. And yes, we do visit Cow's Ice Cream. Uh, I just saw that uh, question pop up. Uh, Thanks, Eric. I was just about to interject. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I keep can't let it. that question go by. <laughs> Who knows about Cow's Ice Cream? You can actually see Cow's Ice Cream on the, the <laughs> boardwalk in front of the Delta. <laughs> uh, tau tour directors work all over the world. And every year we get together and have a seminar. And of course, we talk about our tours. And every now and then we talk about other things. And one of the topics that came up was, where's the best ice cream in the whole world? And uh, it came down to a vote and uh, cow's ice cream created on PEI turned out in our opinion to be the best. And you certainly will have an opportunity to sample it. Wonderful question. Um, when the fishing season on the island was over uh, for the year, uh, the locals would celebrate. They'd celebrate the harvest. Uh, the fishermen would uh, contribute lobster, of course. 
uh, the wives would uh, be baking rolls and pies. The village would gather at the local church hall. Uh, perhaps the parson's wife would play the piano. Uh, the parson would give thanks and bless the meal. And a tradition was born, an island lobster supper. And this is a meal that you're gonna talk about for ages. Mussels, seafood chowder, lobster, of course, mile high lemon meringue pie. Indeed, a meal that you shan't forget. And again, for our uh, vegetarians, for our food allergies, they do have an alternate menu, but it is quite a meal. It's a tradition. Um, we explore the North Shore of the island, another day, another body of water. Uh, this happens to be the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Red sand beaches line the shores of Prince Edward Island National Park, and along with wind sculpted dunes and uh, salt marshes and broad inlets that provide safe harbor uh, for seabirds and seafarers. I call it a, a beach day. We take time to explore one of the finest beaches on the island, Brackley Beach. It's an opportunity to dip your toes into the warmest waters north of the Carolinas. The ecosystem is quite fragile and quite beautiful. Prince Edward Island provided a safe haven for the Acadians during their expulsion. Uh, quaint Acadian villages proudly flying the Acadian flags are part of our beach day. And depending on which tour you choose, the Nova Scotia and the Prince Edward Island tour, Prince Edward Island tour or the Canadian Maritimes tour, we deliver the total island experience. We use both the Confederation Bridge and ferries to travel to and from the island. As kids, mom and dad would throw the Croft family into the car and head off to Princewood Island uh, for vacation. Have I mentioned, uh, this is my stomping grounds. I love to show off the island. Before we jump off the island, I know there's been a question coming up in the question box. Um, Prince Edward Island for both the Canadian Maritimes as well as the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tours is pretty much identical. Um, that is the one part of both tours that is absolutely the same. Um, it's when we're on the mainland Nova Scotia and uh, New Brunswick that it differs. So if, uh, if that's something that is a deciding factor for you, it's the same on both tours. All right, moving on to Cape Breton. I have traveled the globe. I have seen the Canadian and American Rockies, the Andes and the Alps and the highlands of Scotland, but the simple beauty Cape Breton overrides them all. Alexander Graham Bell. So I run the Canadian Maritimes tour and we go to Cape Breton, which is absolutely one of the most magnificent sites um, in Nova Scotia. Those of you traveling on the Canadian Maritimes tour will have the pleasure of spending three nights on Nova Scotia's northeastern portion, Cape Breton Island, only separated from the remainder of the province and the Canadian mainland by um, the two mile strait of Canso. Just look at this view. Oh, so beautiful. I want to be there right now. Um, Cape Breton is renowned for the Cabot Trail, and you can see that winding road, dramatic coastal views, and Celtic culture. The historical Celtic Lodge is the location, is located in the heart of Cape Breton Highlands National Park with spectacular views of Cape Smoky. And this is where we'll be staying when we're in Cape Breton. And quoting Eric Croft, um, another day, another body of water, the Cabot Strait, an important international shipping lane connecting the Gulf of St. Lawrence to the Atlantic Ocean. On a clear day, you can look across uh, the Cabot Strait and you can see Newfoundland, my hometown, my home province in the distance. And we will scream out to mom and see if she has the kettle on for us. Once we arrive at the Celtic Lodge, there will be much time for rest and relaxation. Although there are many scheduled activities, if you choose to go at your own pace, I highly recommend it. 
For those golfers out there, adjacent to the resort is an 18 hold Champion Highlands Link Golf Course. It is definitely a must if you are a golfer. A third of the world famous Cabot Trail winds through Cape Breton Highlands National Park. It's known for its spectacular highlands, the ocean scenery, steep cliffs, deep river canyons bordering the Atlantic Ocean, and is home to many of our iconic animals. And hopefully you'll get to see them while you're with us on tour. Following a day on Middlehead at the Celtic Lodge, uh, we will journey around the Cabot Trail, weaving in and out of the National Park and stopping as often as we possibly can. Um, our destination on the Eastern portion of the Cabot Trail will lead us to the largest Acadian settlement in the Maritimes, Shetty Camp. We will visit Les Trois Pigeons, a historical society with mandate to promote and preserve Acadian culture and language. One of one of the prized cultural traditions being preserved in Shetty Camp is the fine art of rug hooking. It might not sound as grand as the Cabot Trail, but wait until you see these magnificent art pieces. It's incredible. On Cape Breton Island, the music and traditions of Gaelic settlers have been preserved and shared since the early 1800s. You will experience these traditions at the Gaelic College in St. Anne's, where you will learn how to put on a kilt, step to a rolling jig played by fiddles and reeling bagpipes, and hear it in the songs that accompany a milling frolic, or speak it with a lesson in Gaelic. Our last night on the Canadian Maritimes tour is at the Lizcombe Lodge Resort on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, nestled along the tranquil uh, Lizcombe River, as you can see here in this picture. One last chance for a beautiful rest before heading to the airport and back to our normal busy lives. Both tours end in very rural settings. It's a wonderful way to take a minute to soak in the last few moments in Atlantic Canada. To, to access these tours, you will fly into Halifax Stanfield International Airport. I would suggest that you consider a pre-stay in Halifax. Tauk certainly does a wonderful job of showing you the city, but arriving early, getting yourself settled, Taking a stroll along the waterfront will certainly erase all jet lag. I hope to see you on the tour and I hope to see guests that I have led on previous tours. I like Eric was saying, if, um, if you are coming on one of our beautiful tours in the Maritimes, strongly suggesting the, the pre-stay, especially on the Canadian Maritimes tour it's a difference between the Canadian Maritimes tour and the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour is that um, the Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island tour spends a little bit more time in Halifax. So if you are coming on the Canadian Maritimes tour, coming um, a day or two early to explore um, all the sights and sounds uh, would be very beneficial for you so you don't miss out. Um, and another little um, um, tip, travel tip for you for coming to uh, Halifax is that you've seen the bay and the, the harbor in the pictures um, and it's the ocean playground of Canada. Um, the airport is notorious, the Halifax airport is notorious for delayed flights due to fog cover. So um, just to kind of put that out there, if you're a traveler like me that don't like getting delayed because of uh, weather, um, this kind of gives you that little buffer. Um, it was a pleasure spending this time with you. Uh, thank you all for showing your interest in our beloved maritime culture. Uh, we hope that you visit us in person someday so you can truly understand Eric's and my love of uh, our home and, and this region. So take care, au revoir, Maiselin and Wachi. A couple, a couple questions for you too, if you don't mind, Stephanie oh, yeah, sure. and Eric. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the limited amount of time we have left, I'm going to try to ask a broader question that I think a lot of people have asked. And it's when is the best time to go? And what I would I would answer that is whenever we have a trip, 
you know? exactly. <laughs> but uh, if you could yeah. describe maybe the weather as we get into early summer, late summer, early fall, when we have our trips, maybe that would help folks decide. There is absolutely not a bad time to travel on these trips. Uh, but you must take into consideration the maritime weather. Uh, and it's always best to have a sweater, a jacket with you at all times. Because again, getting back to that water, there's always that effect uh, on what we do and what we see. Uh, and it's always best to be prepared. Uh, as long as you have a light jacket, a sweater, uh, some of our activities are outside. Um, as long as you have a sweater jacket, you're gonna be fine. Uh, the fall, I saw somebody ask about fall weather. Uh, September, October, beautiful days, um, 70, 75 degrees, uh, cool evening. So there again, you've got that, that sweater aspect for the evening. Um, just come prepared, sweater, jacket, we'll take care of the rest. Perfect. Yeah, and like Eric was saying, it's a maritime climate, so it's going to be a lot more humid. Um, so I know a lot of people traveling from, say, California, um, it's even different than there because you have the hotter temperatures. So it's humid. It can get chilly at night. And my joke always is always bring a jacket, a sweater, a raincoat, shorts, sunscreen, <laughs> bug spray, a hat, sunglasses, and mitts. Bring everything. <laughs> um, bring everything. <laughs> and then, of course, in the fall, um, you want those cooler night temperatures uh, because that will um, initiate uh, those beautiful trees to start changing colors. So um, if you want it to come in the fall, um, you have a bit of an opportunity to see those changing colors depending on the weather. Um, but all throughout, like Eric was saying, there is no, there is no bad time. Um, there's something amazing offered throughout and um, lobster seasons year round throughout all of the provinces. It depends on where you are. Scallop seasons year round, blueberries, strawberries, maple syrup. It's, um, it's always at our fingertips. So if you like hotter weather, um, come in August. Um, if you like the cooler temperatures, come in the fall. If you like less roads traveled and not as many tourists, um, Come in June and October when schools are back in in place and and that sort of thing. So, but you'll be you'll be delighted every time you come here. The population in the Maritimes is so small, um, you'll still seem like you're the only ones on the road. Perfect. Um, another question I think is good for the broader audience here is. Um, the activity level on, on both these tours. So if someone wants to come on who has difficulty walking, the, the hotel to hotel experience, can you just both go into just briefly what sort of activity level, an act, active level that uh, guests can expect? Um, I saw a question pop up about, um, can you accommodate a walker? Uh, yes, we can. Um, everything we do, uh, I would say it has, uh, there's no difficult walking at all. Uh, there are some activities that I would lean against if you were certainly uh, using a walker, but uh, the walking tour of Lunenburg was designed by me uh, for, um, because of the hills, uh, to accommodate uh, Tauk guests. Um, it's not that difficult, it can be done. Uh, we will be getting on and off the coach. Uh, we will be getting in and out of boats, uh, on and off ferries. So you have to take that into consideration. But if you do so, and if you act, react accordingly, it's this is not a difficult tour pace-wise. Mm -hmm. I agree with Eric. Um, activity level is um, is pretty average. Um, just keep in mind on this tour, when you're in Halifax, it's a lot of uphill and downhill, but cabs and Ubers can be can be utilized. Um, and true Chowk fashion, we will bring you right to the doorstep um, wherever possible. And there are a few activities, whether it's wandering down to the beach um, or when we're in uh, Middlehead uh, at the Celtic Lodge, there's a optional act activity um, for a walk around Middlehead, which 
um, is it's an interesting walk and um, you can always sit that aside and just sit and breathe in the salt air and watch uh, wildlife from your from your uh, uh, Adirondack chair uh, overlooking the, the bay so um, so yeah it, it is um, um, you might be excluded from a few little options but there's always the alternative um, for it Great, thank you. So we are we're right at time. You guys were perfectly perfectly pointed there with your uh, with your, well done. With your descriptions. Uh, we do have a, some more questions coming in, and maybe I'll ask and see if Eric and Stephanie wouldn't mind providing written answers for those. We can get them up on the blog page tomorrow with the recording, so you guys can see those. Yeah. Um, so you can shout join out us. to Lance. Shout out to Lance. Yes, Hi, Lance. Thank you. you. I just over 20 <laughs> talk trip. That's amazing. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, a lot of folks writing in that have had both of you as tour guides. So uh, a cool. lot of um, very nice comments coming in. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. For your time. And as we've mentioned, these are the two tours that were just, just discussed. Um, and it, there is opportunity to join us this year if you would like. And uh, obviously next year as well. So please Please call in to join. We hope this was helpful for you to decide um, if you are interested, which we hope you are. Uh, and thank you to our Atlantic Canada part partners who have who assisted us with, with today's event. So I guess that's it. Stephanie, Eric, any any final words for the for the group? No, oh, this was wonderful. Thank you all. I hope to see you in the maritime sometime soon. We want to see you all on a coach. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you all. We hope you enjoy your, your afternoon and evening. Bye now. Take care, everyone. Happy trails. Bye-bye.